Hi, Skip. How are you? Dan, how are you? What did you make your rookie year? My, my rookie year, uh, 32,000. <laughs> Did you t- know. did you do anything with it? Did you splurge on anything? You know what's so funny is I you know I was drafted in the first round and I got a hundred thousand dollar bonus and my math skills were so inept I thought I'd never have to work again. I thought I was wealthy <laughs> beyond belief. You know, I just that kind of that kind of goes to show you my my educational background. Do you wish you had gone to college? Well, I did. I just I, just, I went three years, but I'm unfortunately still a freshman. <laughs> well then do you wish you'd gone right out of high school no i'm glad i didn't i was drafted by the second i was drafted in the second round by the cubs uh high in the second round and they offered me eighteen thousand dollars and when i when i left to go to the university of arizona you know i made one last call to them because i did want to play baseball and they tried to buy me out of my scholarship and they offered me 19,000. <laughs> and in the end, I'm kind of glad that I did because I think I'd have been one of those guys that fell through the cracks. I wasn't very strong, kind of immature. And I think the three years of college was wonderful for me. When did you realize that you could be a manager? Well, uh, probably not until the day somebody called and asked me. You know, I, I think because I got hurt so early in my career, I started to just try to make myself valuable enough to be on a team, you know, whether it was a pinch hitter, a defensive replacement, something, whatever a team needed. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it was starting to prepare me for maybe being a manager. You know, when you sit on the bench and you, you wonder when you're going to pinch hit. So you always try to be ready. So you're really thinking kind of like a manager, even though that wasn't my thought at the time. But when Buddy Bell called and asked me if I wanted to be a minor league coach and then manager, um, that's when I started. I realized just how passionate I was about it. I mean, I loved it. I, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Do you have a cast system with your players? Like certain players get uh, more attention or they get more freedom? Is everybody treated the same, I guess is the question. We try really hard to because i don't like that cast system and for a couple reasons one if if you yell at the young guys about not hustling and you don't about the veterans well i think your message becomes kind of diluted or doesn't mean very much so we try to hold the veterans to the highest standard so when we say something to everybody it means the same and i'll give you another example like you know in spring training in arizona where you know you can drive to the games we, if, if you're on our team, you're allowed to drive. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be a mainstay. You know, we, we try to go out of our way to treat everybody the same. But did you treat Jordan the same when you had him in, uh, in, the, in the summer league in Arizona? Oh, we, we try. I mean, obviously, you've got to be a little bit intelligent about, you know, some things. I mean, like we, we, we had a thing where all the guys used to go uh, – workout, lift, stuff on the road. And to take him would have been a fiasco because nobody would have got anything done. So, you know, we've bent some rules, but but we also, again, and I, you've heard me say this before, Michael was so good about being part of what we were doing that it never got in the way. So um, it was funny. One time I was yelling at the guys. I didn't think they were doing very well during infield practice. I was kind of getting on him. And after I were done, he walked over. He goes, I know you were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, how much pressure uh, is on the Indians added pressure that LeBron has left town and uh, Cavs not what they once were? No, you know what? None, none. I mean, shoot, I, I was as big a LeBron fan as every, anybody. I mean, shoot, you know, him leaving – you know, I, I'm worried more worried about like the downtown and kind of the economy because yeah. I saw what he did for the downtown. But I mean, it's hard enough to win baseball games. We can't try to win more because LeBron left. Shoot, that that doesn't help anybody. We're talking to Terry Francona, the Indians manager. Uh, win yesterday over the Pirates, and today they got the Tigers uh, coming up later on tonight. Uh, take us back to uh, July 10th and the call to the bullpen. Oh, you mean the mix-up? Yeah. 
I was going to say, you got it because I can barely remember back. Um, <laughs> is you know, it, we is this funny mid- now at all? Is there any humor attached well, to it? Well, it kind of has to be. I mean, I've had friends come up to me like one guy came up to me about a half hour after. And he goes, is it too soon? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, a little, a little bit. Um, you know, we were in the middle of a, a kind of a meltdown inning. You know, Cody was having a heck of an inning, and my head was spinning. I'm trying to figure out if we're going to walk – I think it was Scott Schebler or, you know, are we going to pitch to the next guy? And I think Carl Willis's head was spinning because the way Cody was pitching. And I walked over to him and I said, you know, get, get OP up. I was just trying to be in case we got around to Votto. And I think in the midst of everything, he thought I said, OT and I'll be damned. Here I go out to the mound. It's four to three <laughs> with bases loaded. And I see Dan Otero coming through. And what really, what, the worst thing, the worst thing of all for me was not what people said about me. I, I felt bad for Dan Otero because I put him in a terrible position. Because all of a sudden here he comes, you know, through the gates and he's not the guy we wanted. And that's not a knock on him. That was just you know, it was it was the right situation for Oliver Perez, and that's my mistake. And and I tried to own up to it. I mean, you know, I think as a manager, when you make a mistake, you got to own up to it. Now, saying that, you better not make very many of those. It doesn't work. Okay, now what is the solution? So, what's the new policy when you call to the bullpen and it's OT or OP? No, it's it's not a. That somebody asked me that. It's not a. It, it's just I just need to probably speak more clearly. And and you know, it was one of those perfect storm things where we were in the middle of a meltdown. Um, I was probably spitting tobacco all over everybody else and myself, <laughs> and just need to slow down and make sure that we're on the same page. That's all. When did you start chewing tobacco? Um, when I was a young player and I wasn't playing. You know, you kind of get bored and you start to mess around. I couldn't do it when I played. And, you know, obviously I get so nervous during games, and I still do, that I kind of chew the inside of my cheek because I just get nervous. Now I wrap it in gum because, one, it's it's a terrible habit. And I I know it. And I don't want kids seeing it, thinking it's cool. So I always try to wrap it in gum just because I just don't (laughs) – I, yeah, I don't know. I just don't think it's a great message to send. But I don't try to lie about it either. I mean, it's it's there, and I do it. And the day the season's over, I quit. And then the day the season starts, I start again. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know who came up with this. So I tried it, and I got so buzzed. And then one time I swallowed some, and I went, I'll never be a big leaguer because I can't chew tobacco. Well, well, you know, it's funny, Dan. I, this is, you know, I chew the, the tobacco, the leaf tobacco. The the Copenhagen stuff, the stuff. Yeah. I tried that my first week at college. I was at a rush party, and I ended up sleeping underneath the wheel of a fire engine because it didn't agree with me at all. I, mean, it just, I, I can't even smell it to this day. Oh. But but now with the leaf stuff, if I swallow it, I've been doing it so long, because all it does is give me the hiccups. So it's 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 amazing how different it is. I had somebody on, I'm trying to think who the analyst was, but they said, I, I, it might have been Kevin Millar or, or Sean Casey, and I said, um, you know, uh, best two guys on a team in baseball right now. I said, you know, would you take Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge? And he said, no, I'd take Lindor and Ramirez. It's pretty high praise there. I think that's, I think that's very astute also, and I think they're very worthy of conversations like that. I mean, they're both 25 years old or at least under, you know, whatever, 24 and 25. Their better days may be ahead of them. And I mean, they, they're, they're unbelievable. They may not be as big as judge and Gordon, but they are, they are tremendous players and they love playing the game. They're good for the game. They're great for the Indians, but they're also good for the game. Yeah. Lindor loves to play. I mean, just his enthusiasm is contagious. Well, I'd put Ramirez in that group too. I mean, this kid is everywhere on every play. If you ever look up and see a pop up to the catcher, Ramirez is standing right next to him. <laughs> I mean, I'd put, I'd lump Ramirez in that same That's conversation. Great. Who does Mike Trout remind you of? I tell Mike Starbaugh, our third base coach, it reminds me of him all the time. So Sarby's about 5'11", uh, 
It teases him all the time. He looks like he has he has like a disease because he doesn't have any muscles. <laughs> but, um, I, I don't know. I mean, Trout reminds me more of like a a running back, you know, with those shoulders that, that you know, I mean, he's just so broad in the shoulders. Why? Why? Who are you getting at? No, I'm just curious. Did you think he reminded you of me? No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No. no. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm, you know, because there's this old school feel of him, and I don't know as long as you've been around baseball where you go, you know what, I, I kind of see traits here of, you know, because he's mentioned with the greats of all time, Terry. You know, that's what. Yeah, maybe Ted Kozuski, you know, the guy that was, yeah. he's ahead of me, was with my dad, but that's the guy with the arms where they had to kind of make the uniform different because he's, you're right. I mean, he's, he's, he's got such raw, you know, he'll take swings and you're not even sure it's a great swing, but he just, and then you look up and see where it lands. I mean, he just, and he plays so hard. And he plays every day. I mean, he's, He's good. For, he's another guy. He's good for the game. You're not really thrilled when you're playing against him, but he's good for the game. All right. If I said you could buy stock in another player on another team, and I gave you Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, uh, Aaron Judge, and Shohei Otani. Oh man, I don't know. I mean, I shoot. I got to be careful when you start talking about other players. Um, there's so many good ones. I I think right now one of the better players in the game might be the kid that just went to the Dodgers. Um, Machado? You know, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, he is the guy that can play third and short, and he just, every time he swings, I, I know we sit in the dugout, and I'm like, I hope he swings the hard he throws his back out. <laughs> because it's just, I've never, he takes so many good swings that it just scares you. Like, you take a swing and a foul back, it's like, oh, God, you know, he's so close and just, Every at bat is just it's just gut wrenching. Is there a guy where you know when the ball leaves his bat, like it's a, a home run? Like is there not on your team, but is there a guy like have you ever been looking down all of a sudden you just hear it and you know that it's gone? Well, when you see the guys in New York now, like Judge and those those guys was <laughs> Judge hit a ball at our place and I was glad he used a two iron instead of maybe a four iron because it didn't get up <laughs> enough to go out. But it was just, you know, it was like, I think the exit velocity was like 111. You know, it was just a rocket, but unfortunately, he used the wrong club for him. I couldn't imagine playing third base. It's like when Willie McCovey and, and Willie Stargell yeah. played. Like, you, I just couldn't imagine well, being there at third base well, with, with those guys, it was right? funny. The one game against them, they were starting to pull away. So we played the infield in. And I know Ramirez and Lindor looked at me like, you come out here and play in. <laughs> and rightfully so. Hey, uh, good to talk to you. And uh, thanks for joining us, as always. Dan, my enjoy to Take care, man. I'll see you. All right. That's Terry Francona, Indians manager. Continental Tire, Coach's Corner. Always good to catch up with him. He's one of my favorites. Continental Tire is proud to be the exclusive tire of the Dan Patrick Show. No matter where you drive or what you drive, Continental Designs Tires for what you do. For more information, ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire. For what you do. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.